Hi, my name is Tony Carriero. Welcome to my presentation on how I can connect new knowledge to practice. Lunch with a theorist. Many nursing theorists have helped define the discipline of nursing. Nursing theory is the term given to the body of knowledge that is used to describe, explain, and predict nursing practice. Nursing theory is important because it helps us to decide what we know and what we need to know in order to shape the way we practice our discipline. Nursing theorists and their theories are the key in helping us connect knowledge to our practice. Florence Nightingale, Hildegard Peplau, Jean Watson, Patricia Benner are just a few of the great theorists that have and continue to shape the discipline of nursing. As we face issues in our everyday practice, wouldn't it be great if we could just call them up and ask them to share their wisdom and knowledge with us? Well, why don't we? For this presentation, I've decided to invite Miss Virginia Henderson to lunch. When deciding where I would take her for lunch, I came across an article written in memoriam of Miss Henderson by Ruth Nolmuller. Nolmuller was a close and personal and professional friend of Miss Henderson. She stated that Miss Henderson enjoyed visiting with her friends in the comfort of her own living room, where she was surrounded by her art, her books, and her personal treasures. Therefore, I decided to invite myself over for lunch. Before we go, I would like to give you some background information on Virginia Henderson's and an overview of her needs theory. Virginia Henderson, often referred to as the First Lady of Nursing or the Nightingale of Modern Times, was an author, an educator, a theorist, a researcher, but first of all, a nurse. She was born in Missouri in 1897. She began her nursing career at the Army School of Nursing during World War I. She later obtained a bachelor's degree in 1932 and a master's degree in 1934 from Columbia University. She also obtained a few honorary doctorates from several universities such as Yale and the University of Western Ontario. As an author, Miss Henderson's first work was the revision of Palmer's fourth edition of the textbook Principles and Practices of Nursing. She went on to write many other publications including several books that have become nursing classics such as Basic Principles of Nursing Care, and The Nature of Nursing. In 1958, at the request of the International Council of Nurse, she was asked to define nursing. She stated, The unique function of the nurse is to assist the individual, sick or well, in the performance of those activities contributing to health or recovery or peaceful death that he would perform unaided if he had the necessary strength, will, or knowledge. And to do this in such a way has to help him gain independence as rapidly as possible. Based on her definition, Ms. Henderson identified 14 components of basic nursing care. These components are the framework for the needs theory. The basic assumption of the needs theory is that the nurse will care for the patient up to the point where the patient has regained their independence. The role of the nurse is to ass uh, assess needs and then take on the responsibility to maintain patient wholeness until the patient gains back the will, the strength, or the knowledge to do so for himself. This theoretical model should be considered a facilitator of clinical nursing care and favors ways of assessing the whole patient. The focus of the theory was not the psychological human behavior, but rather the client's problem, education, and nursing practice. In its simplicity, the needs theory can easily guide nurses in their practice when providing patient care and is easily applicable to all clinical situations. If I was privileged enough to sit down with Ms. Henderson, I would want to ask her a few questions that would help me gain real-life guidance on practice issues that I face every day as a nursing educator. Henderson Needs Theory was first penned in the 1950s and is based on 14 basic needs. Breathing normally, eating and drinking adequately, eliminating body waste, moving, sleeping, selecting suitable clothes, maintaining body temperature, keeping the body clean, avoiding dangers, communicating with others, worshipping according to one's faith, working in such a way that there is a sense of accomplishment, playing and learning. 
The model is straightforward and has been used worldwide for decades, but it's often criticized for its simplicity. In its simplicity, the model can easily guide nurses with uh, knowledge that is applicable to all clinical situations. I will want to ask Ms. Anderson how she believes this model can help novice nurses develop critical thinking when they need to address more specialized needs or more complex situations. Ms. Henderson would probably argue that the concepts within this theory aim to establish a base of knowledge to guide the professional practice. As it favors ways of assessing the human being in its entirety, the nurse must use critical thinking in providing a systemized care based on scientific knowledge. Henderson believed that nursing independently initiates and controls activities related to basic nursing care. Self-direction and independence promote critical thinking and clinical reasoning. Also, we could probably add that all nursing care is essentially complex, but it involves constant adaptation of procedures to the needs of the individual. Each individual is unique and complex. By consequence, nurses are forced to adapt to constant variables by using their self-reasoning and critical thinking. Another question I would like to ask Ms. Henderson would be relating to continuing education. As educators, we are often faced with resistance to change. We have all heard at one time or another, why change what ain't broke? According to Henser Kim, there's a great deal of disparity and distance between what is produced by scientists, researchers, and theorists, enriching knowledge based in a public domain, and what is integrated and incorporated into private domains of practitioners. Ms. Henderson devoted her life to research and education. I would be curious to know how she feels about this and how she believes we can promote continuing education among our expert nurses. She formulated a model that was patient-centered and that promoted independent nursing practice. I would imagine that she would tell us that the complexity and the quality of the services nurses provide to their patients is limited only by the imagination and the competence of the nurse who is interpreting it. For Anderson, the nurse must be knowledgeable, have some base for practicing individualized care, and be a scientific problem solver. In order to do this, nurses have to be willing to change and adapt to new demands of a highly technological environment. As an advocate for worldwide nursing libraries, I would imagine she would encourage nurses to seek evidence-based knowledge and to promote best practice. She would encourage nurses to be curious and to reflect on their nursing competencies when it involves maintaining a person's health and independence. Ms. Henderson once said that the time, that time is like an arrow. There is a steady progression of new and exciting ideas which often fade in importance as time passes. I would imagine she would also say that we cannot get stuck at the tail end of the arrow. We need to keep moving forward in order to maintain our competencies. As we conclude, I believe it's important to mention that Virginia Henderson's theory and work has framed a discussion for remembering the art of nursing in a technological age. Henderson's work is viewed as a nursing philosophy of purpose and function. Her theory gives us scaffolding on which to build excellence. Thank you.